Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Public Works for today, Monday, August 15th, 2015, 2016. Commission Commissioner Repenning, James and Jacinto are present. President James, we have a quorum. May we start with Bureau introductions, please, starting with Bureau of Street Lighting. Good morning, Fabian Cheng, Bureau of Street Lighting. Ron Tall, Bureau of Street Services. Daniel McKay, Bureau of Sanitation. Good morning, Steve Chen, Bureau of Engineering. Good morning, Chris Smith, Bureau of Contract Administration. Good morning, Ted Jordan, Public Works General Counsel. Fernando Campos, Executive Officer. President James, we do not have any speaker cards under general public comment. We do not have any commentary under the Neighborhood Council. Under today's agenda, we do have speaker cards on item number two. Okay, then we'll close general public comment. We'll also close our Neighborhood Council category of commentary. Um, our first item of business, the approval of the meeting minutes from the meeting of Wednesday, July 27th, 2016. Is there a second to my motion that we approve those meeting minutes by Commissioner Repenning? Any objection? Without objection, we'll approve those meeting minutes. Um, agenda item number four, specifications are submitted for board adoption and authorization to advertise for the invitation of bids in Council District 14 for the secondary sewer renewal program, uh, Lorena Street and Whittier Boulevard project, the estimate's $2,767,900, and the bid receipt date is Wednesday, September 28, 2016. Is there a second to my motion that we adopt agenda item number four forthwith? By Commissioner Repenning, uh, any objection? Without objection, uh, we will do so, so those bids will be submitted, or I'm sorry, um, the, we will advertise for the invitation of bids. Um, agenda item number three, uh, recommending that the board concur with the action of Commissioner Davis approving the request of Ford EC Incorporated for subcontractor substitution of Asbestos Instant Response Incorporated doing business as Air Demolition and Environmental Solutions with Aero Concrete Cutting Company Incorporated for demolition work in connection with the South District Sewer Maintenance, Maintenance Yard Project. Mr. Smith on number three. Good morning, Chris Smith, Bureau of Contract Administration, General Services Division. Uh, our office received on July 19, 2016, a request from 4DC to substitute Asbestos Instant Response, Inc., uh, doing business as Air Demolition Environmental Solutions, an SBE subcontractor for the demo work on that contract with Aero Concrete Cutting Incorporated, an MBE subcontractor. Their request was accompanied with a letter from asbestos withdrawing from the, that portion of the work. Uh, the contractor did comply with the GFE requirements. The bid listed amount for asbestos portion of the demo work was 189,000. Arrow will complete the work for the same amount, so there will be no cost to the city associated with this substitution. The Bureau concurs with Commissioner Davis's recommendation to approve this substitution. Any questions regarding agenda item number three? I'll make a motion that we adopt agenda item number three, seconded by Commissioner Jacinto. Uh, any objection? With that objection, we'll adopt agenda item number three. Any problem sending number three forthwith? We will send number three forthwith. Agenda item number one, Council District 15, recommending the board authorize that the city engineer to issue a revision of the task for solicitation to Fugro Consultants Incorporated from the pre-qualified on-call consultants list, increasing the budget authority from $154,214 to $173,839 for geotechnical engineering services during construction in connection with the Terminal Island Water Reclamation Plant Advanced Wastewater Purification Facility Ultimate Expansion Project. Um, Jose Berstein. Welcome, sir. Morning, everyone. Okay, I'll do my best. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jose Berstein with the Bureau of Engineering, Geotechnical Engineering Group. I'm here today to request authority to issue a revision to the task order solicitation to our consultant, Fugro, increasing the budget authority from $154,214 to $173,839 for geotechnical services during construction. The Terminal Island Water Reclamation Plant Ultimate Expansion Project is currently 55% complete in construction. This project will double the plant's water purification system and includes new microfiltration and reverse osmosis systems. 
a two and a half million gallon equalization tank, and various other improvements. As part of our original design report, it was determined that the site would require ground improvement construction prior to construction foundations. During construction, GEO, GEO was required to provide geotechnical services to observe and verify that the contractor was in conformance with the recommendations of the design report. And due to the specialized nature of the ground improvement construction, it was decided to select a consultant to provide inspection and verification testing. Therefore, BOE issued a task order solicitation to all 15 consultants on the pre-qualified on-call list. FUGRO was selected and BOE issued an NTP for the amount of $134,099. Initially, the ground improvement subcontractor was having difficulties consistently meeting the densification requirement which was determined by verification testing. The subcontractor then performed remedial work which required a significant increase in the lab testing, inspection, and reporting. This additional work, excuse me, this additional work resulted in the increase in cost of the task order. In addition, the recommended MBE, WBE participation levels in the TOS were 12 and 2 percent. Based on FUGRO's latest invoices, their participation levels are approximately 11 and 16 percent. Considering the time left to the end of construction, FUGRO has informed me that they will meet or exceed their pledged participation levels. Are there any, for, any questions at this time? Okay, um, thank you, uh, Jose. Any questions at all, uh, Commissioner Asento? Thank you, President James. Um, Jose, thank you for the report. The deviation in the, the maybe weeby numbers is a result of the adjustment in the scope of work. That's correct. Correct? Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you for clearing that up, um, Commissioner Asento. Any, any questions? I don't have any questions either. Commissioner Asento has made a motion that we adopt agenda item number one. I'll second it. Any objection? Without objection, we'll adopt agenda item number one. Any issues sending it forthwith? We'll send number one forthwith. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You too. Um, agenda item number two. Is everybody here that you think is coming this morning, or should I call agenda item number five up? You want a, you want a few more minutes, or do you want to? We do have one speaker that just walked out of the room. Yeah, let me go ahead and call agenda number five in case somebody else shows up and then we'll uh, give them time. You're good? Okay. Uh, you, so we can call number two now? Okay. Um, agenda item number two. Requested tree removal, Council District 11, 1227 East Preston Way. Recommending that the board find that the tree removal classifies as operation, repair, maintenance, or minor alteration of an existing street, sidewalk, and gutter involving negligible or no expansion of use beyond that previously existing and does not involve the removal of a scenic source. Number two, find that the action is exempt under Article 3, Section 1, Class 1, Category 3, existing facility, sidewalk repair, or maintenance of the City of Los Angeles Environmental Quality Act guidelines from 2002. Number three, find that none of the exceptions to the use of a categorical exemption as set forth in Section 15300.2 of the California Environmental Quality Act guidelines apply. And four, approve the request for a fee permit to remove two Mexican fan palm trees and two rubber trees for driveway installation and the reconstruction of an off-grade public sidewalk, curb, and gutter located at 1227 East Preston Way. Tree replacements are required. This has been continued a couple of times. The original board date was July 11, 2016, and we continued it a couple of times to allow the city attorney's office the opportunity to review whether or not the four-foot requirement of the sidewalk would need to be in place or whether, which would, in essence, require the removal of uh, the subject palm trees, at least, that we're talking about or whether the sidewalk could be reduced uh, a number of inches to allow the uh, palm trees to remain. Um, this is because of a, the question was asked, I think I asked it because of the Willits federal case settlement 
that has resulted in our sidewalk repair plan and my concern that um, once we begin to do the work we have to meet with the federal ADA standards once we re repair something we cannot repair something that is not ADA compliant and I wanted to find out if there was any way that we have an exception here so we could save these trees. Mr. Tyson, I'm going to call you up first because your indication will, um, will um, result, um, in my understanding, in whether or not one, two, three, or all of the speakers that have cards in will want to speak. Um, so uh, my understanding is that you, that actually, more than just a review, the city attorney's office actually sent the assistant city attorney to the site for a site visit um, with you. Is that true? That's correct. Okay, so uh, let us know what happened, please. And then you can kind of summarize for give us our, give us your lay of the land and let us know what happened with Ms. Rittenberg from the city attorney's office, and we'll go from there. Um, when we met at board on uh, July 11th, uh, we had continued it and. Um, the owner, Mr. Romero, actually came back on one of the days that we had continued it because one of the questions was would he allow 12 inches of his property to be utilized to move the sidewalk over and he's not willing to do that. So that was the first thing that was looked at. The second thing that was looked at is there any way that we could meander around the trees or, or uh, reduce the width of the sidewalk to create the ability to keep them, which we are not able to do. Per the Willits case, four feet is the uh, minimum allowed width. And um, did Ms. Rittenberg feel that that was the case regarding this specific instance? Yes. All right, go ahead. So uh, the original inspection, which determined that the 18-foot-wide uh, driveway would uh, uh, have the one Washingtonia Robusta right inside the driveway, is still the case. Uh, and the four-foot sidewalk is still the case. So the recommendation of the Bureau still remains that the two rubber fi uh, ficus elastica trees and the two palm trees, the Washingtonian robustas, will require removal in order for the voluntary improvements of the curb, gutter, uh, driveway apron, and the sidewalk all to be uh, put in and put in in a safe manner in accordance with the trees. Um, the one palm tree that's by the driveway, even if they uh, were to make it 15 feet, you would be basically digging and, and, and roughing up all the soil around the entire palm tree, which is not a good thing to do, and cutting into the side of it. So uh, with that, the recommendation stays the same, and we're uh, asking the board to approve the four trees to be removed. There still will be three palm trees there left. There will be two at the one end and one at the other end of the property. So, uh, for, was maybe I was mistaken, but I thought that we had agreed that, did we agree initially that some of the trees could come out? The two rubber trees yeah. definitely okay, so, needed, yes. So those weren't, the, we, we, we put those aside. Yes. The rubber trees are, are coming out. I thought we were down to one palm tree, not two. There's two palm trees there that uh, the, the one palm tree <clears throat> grows 10 inches over the top of the sidewalk, which we... I'm sorry, would you repeat that? The one palm tree does one, what? One of the palm trees that's requested for removal grows 10 inches over the sidewalk. The base of the tree is four feet. Okay. And so therefore asking to make the sidewalk smaller would allow that tree to be able to remain and the other tree that's next to it where the driveway apron is at, if in fact the driveway apron was reduced down to 15 feet. Um, did, the, did the owner agree to reduce the driveway apron? He did not, re he did not agree to do any of the above. He was actually here and he said that he would not give up 12 inches of his property and I mentioned to the fact that uh, if the driveway could be uh, made smaller and the sidewalk smaller, then I felt that that tree could remain. So, if okay, even... let me let me let me separate this a little bit. Then. Okay. If because I do remember, this is my recollection, but I remember that there was a representation that he would agree to allow some of his property to go, but then when he showed up here, he said, "Well, that wasn't." 
I didn't know I was going to be doing that. Um, but what about the driveway apron? If 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 are you saying? Let me let me try and simplify this. Are you saying that if we cannot reduce the sidewalk width, then both palm trees have to go? Correct. Both palm trees hinge on the sidewalk, not just one, but both. Correct. Even if he, let's assume he were willing to reduce the driveway apron. If we can't reduce the sidewalk, the palm tree still has to go. My opinion is that palm tree would still need to be removed due to all the uh, earthwork that's going to be done around the base of the palm tree. So the driveway apron is basically irrelevant if you can't get the reduction of the sidewalk. That is correct. All right, go ahead. That's, that summarizes it in, co in totality, Commissioner. Okay, so, so the, just so we're, the record is clear before I go to the speakers, please, even if you're repeating yourself, sure. state what the reasoning is that the palm trees have to go if the sidewalk width cannot be reduced, which we're told by our lawyers it cannot be under the Willett Settlement and our ADA compliance requirements. Go ahead. For the palm tree that's next to the driveway, they'll still have to cut the roots on, let's say, the uh, frontage of the property side in order for the sidewalk. Then they have to come around the other side for the driveway apron and cut everything there. Then they have to come in front of that palm tree and cut everything for the curb and gutter, leaving only one side over here untouched, and the roots from the rubber trees come all the way over, and on that side, that means they got to grind all the rubber roots out as well. Therefore, disturbing 360 degrees all the way around that palm tree, the soil that it is uh, attached to, because the roots on a palm tree only go straight down. So if you start cutting all the way around it, now you've got a tree that's like in a box. Does that, these, does these that affect the integrity and the safety of the tree? Correct. When you've got 75 plus foot tall palm trees with all the variables of the wind and everything, they need everything to hold on down there because they only have that base. That's just like where I say the base that's growing over the sidewalk is 10 inches. That's because the palm tree really wanted to root down below that sidewalk due to the height of that tree. was unable to do that, so it put other roots around the base of the tree on the other three sides, which is why these uh, bases of these palm trees are all the way from curb to the sidewalk and growing over the sidewalk. The one next to the driveway, disturbing the, the soil all the way around that tree like that, is highly not recommended to leave standing there with the, the high winds and things like this, and it just it is not a safe thing to do. Okay. And the other palm tree, what about the one that's not the uh, in the driveway area? It's all the way down at the end by the street light where there's another one on the other side of the street light. There's a palm tree six feet away is a street light, six feet away is another palm tree, another six feet is the next palm tree. I've got a whole diagram here where I drew out all the palm trees. They're all pretty close together, and that's why they like that look of where they're all five together. But that's not what will end up happening. You'll have two at one end and one at the other end that can remain. You'll still have those three tall ones. Right, but so, but the reason, so we've got the, the palm tree that's by the driveway that, that you say has to be removed. Correct. Then we have another palm tree on the property that you say has to be removed. Correct. Okay. What's the reasoning that that one has to be removed? Is it the same reasoning? It's, it's the same. It, yes, it's the that same. That one's not by the driveway, but... But, but we have to put in a four-foot sidewalk. And it's growing 10 inches over the top of the sidewalk that's currently there. So that's why I recommended a 12-inch reduction in the sidewalk to give these trees plenty of room for expansion and everything, which they're not going to get, putting a sidewalk right back in next to them because you're going to have to cut into the sides of the trees, which is highly not recommended because now you're taking away the roots of the tree that only grow right next to it. And that, so you'd have to literally cut into the tree. Correct. And that would affect its integrity and safety? Correct. Okay. Um, any questions for Mr. Tyson before I go to the speakers? Um, I've got um, Stefan Hammerschmidt, Michael Stinger, Lauren Greenfield, and David Ewing. And um, I don't mind. You can go in whichever, whichever order you would prefer. Hi, I'm uh, Stefan Hammerschmidt. I'm one of the neighbors who is really concerned about those trees. And I have actually one picture here. Uh, it's the tree in question, which is right next to the driveway. It doesn't even grow over the sidewalk. 
Uh, and we also brought in an arborist report a, report a couple of weeks ago, uh, where the arborist said, like, you know, it could be, uh, the new site work could be altered slightly. And the uh, developer and owner, he's actually in favor for doing that. He also said, like, he would be willing to actually change the driveway so it doesn't go in straight, so it would be further away <clears throat> from the palm tree. Basically, four feet, he would move the sidewalk over, and then it wouldn't go in in a straight line, but in, a, uh, in an angle. Um, and he would be also willing to give up, uh, give up four to eight inches of his property. That's what he told us last time. Not 12 inches, but four to eight inches. Um, and the arborist uh, last time also talked about that it's being done all the time. He has done it himself uh, many times. Just a little alteration around, like creating a little skirt around the uh, roots. Um, and literally the one in question is the healthiest of, of all and doesn't have any impact on the sidewalk. There's always some side roots growing over, but it's very easy to cut those off and they will not impact the, the growth of the tree. And again, like Mr. Romano, who cannot be here today, but he mentioned last time also, he's willing to even move his um, driveway over a couple of feet so it doesn't impact the tree. And he wants to keep all of the trees, if possible, except the uh, rubber trees. Is that all? Yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Tyson, did you talk to the developer? The day that I was there with the city attorney, I saw him and uh, he had some snide remarks to say to me that he didn't, uh, he didn't uh, agree to the different things that uh, were asked of him and he just wants the trees out so that he can move forward. So he's um, not agreeing to the meandering sidewalk that was just described? No, not that I'm aware of. I, I can't speak for him, but uh, I did uh, speak to him when he showed up that day. I am the one that asked him to show up at board because I wanted him to be aware of what was being asked to him in these. And you, I think he stated that day he was not. Do we have any indication that the, that the owner would agree to a meandering sidewalk? Because uh, a meandering sidewalk is going to require an easement onto his or her. I don't, is the owner a man or a woman or a couple? I don't know. But whoever the owner's property is, it's going to require an easement onto the property for a meandering sidewalk. Yeah, we go on the private property, and he's already stated here that he was not willing to give up 12 inches of his property or any of it. I, I, I recall that. I mean, I, you know, we, we, we historically... We, we offer meandering sidewalks all the time, and, and owners never do it because they don't know how it will affect the value of their property when they sell it later is what happens. Um, and I don't, have, I don't have anything from the owner before me that he or she would agree to a meandering sidewalk, and I have my recollection of a statement made not knowing they were being asked to provide an easement for a meandering sidewalk. I've got an idea of how we can solve this at the end of the hearing, but um, uh, okay. Any uh, any anything before we go to the next speaker, colleagues? Either okay. Thank you, Mr. Tyson. Um, uh, now we've got Ms. Greenfield, Mr. Ewing, and Mr. Stanger in whatever order you prefer. Ms. Greenfield. Thank you. Um, first of all, I think the developer is the owner, and I think it was mischaracterized what he what he agreed to do. He, he signed a notarized document saying he wanted to save the trees. Then when he was here, he was asked if he would be willing to give an easement onto his property, but it wasn't determined how many inches, and he said he could not say yes until he knew exactly what was being asked. My, like, like Stefan said, he, was, he agreed to four to eight inches. My understanding is his problem is 12 inches all the way across. He wasn't given the option of 12 inches just where the trees are. I think he would be willing to do 12 inches if it was limited to the two spots where the trees are. He also did agree to reduce the size of his... But we're driveway. speculating about what somebody else would do about their property. No, no, it's his property. He owns I know. <laughs> and, well, and he's not here, so we're, we're speculating about somebody else's ownership of their property. Well, the problem is that he signed a document that we brought to the first hearing because that's what we thought was necessary at that point. He, he came all the way down 
at the last hearing, but there wasn't information yet, and then he wasn't able to attend today. So I understand he has to agree, but either he's telling us one thing and then being dishonest, but I think actually my understanding of what he was asked was if he was willing to go into his property 12 inches on the entire property, which is a very big concession for a developer, I think we can agree. Sure. And, you know, this is a really kind of um, amazing opportunity for a collaboration between a community and a developer. We're, we're collaborating, ma'am. No, no, I'm talking about... <laughs> we're trying. No, I know. I'm talking about between yeah. the developer. Oh, okay. Like, he already has agreed to reduce his driveway and to do some easement if it's not excessive. And the Venice Community Council thought it was a very important development that there was this working together on it. So um, I think if we could ask him specifically if he would be willing to do the meandering sidewalk and only go in to the 12 inches where the trees are that we might have an agreement and I think we would have last time if we had known that that's what we were asking. But what was being asked at that point was an undetermined amount of inches which I don't think he could okay. agree to without knowing. That's fair enough. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Tyson, let me ask you this. Um, so these are, and forgive my lack of recollection, the, the cost for this is being borne by the developer, which I, I, is, I'm told is the property owner. Correct. Okay. If we, because what I'm hearing on the table is, uh, I, I would like to not take up everybody's, continually take up everybody's time as we continue to collaborate. I think Ms. Greenfield makes a, a good point, though, that we are all trying to work towards the result of saving the trees. My recollection is, uh, that, that, or my understanding, rather, is if we were to do a me meandering sidewalk so that the owner's not giving up 12 inches of their entire property, but just where the cut around the tree would need to be, so that we have a sidewalk that in two areas cuts around the tree. Um, I would, I, I'm trying to in my mind figure out how we grant the, uh, the tree removal permit um, unless the uh, uh, owner slash developer agrees to a meandering sidewalk, um, which Ms. Greenfield represents. Granted, she's had more contact with the owner developer than we have, but um, but I'm trying to. I want to protect the owner their rights too. Um, because you tell me that they say they want the trees gone. They tell me that, that the same person's saying we want to save the trees. I've got to deal with an application in front of us Correct. Um, that we need to deal with. So, uh, if, 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 so it seems to me it's up to the developer and the owner. If the developer owner will agree to a meandering sidewalk, the trees can be saved. If the developer owner will not based on what we're required to do with sidewalk repair, the trees cannot be saved. So what I want to try and do is craft a result here today that doesn't mean everybody has to come back again um, that, um, that gives us the result we want. So um, perhaps we, and I know I've got a couple more speakers, but I'm just trying to put a thought, an idea on the table here. Um, perhaps we uh, we grant well once we grant the perhaps we I, I don't know how we do it without, without having the developer here because if I grant a tree removal permit for a meandering sidewalk Man, the and I'll take any suggestions from my colleagues here too. If I if I grant a tree removal permit for a meandering sidewalk, the owner developer may think that that's what he has to do for to get his tree removal permit. When that's not the case, we're asking him for a concession. Correct. It's not a requirement. Right. And this is a voluntary so, improvement. I don't want him to think that he's being required to. 
So I said, but if I deny the tree removal permit, um, you know, uh, uh, then then it's 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 not meeting with again. It's it's not we're not going to get the sidewalk that we're required to have. Right. So I feel like the only thing I can do is get word from the developer uh, owner on whether or not he will agree with a meandering sidewalk. And if he will, then we can grant a tree removal permit for... Now, the other thing we could do is we could grant the tree removal permit for a meandering sidewalk and have you let him know that that's not a requirement. That if... That, and and if, he, that if he doesn't agree, then... He can take him out anyway. I mean, I don't. Plus, we need to reduce the uh, width of the uh, driveway, which he said he would be willing to do that. That is one thing he said he would be willing to do. And if we meander the sidewalk around the trees, the trees are so close together that the meander wouldn't just be a couple inches here. It's going to go up in his front of his property because you can't just have a sidewalk that goes like this. It's got to slowly meander around everything. So. <clears throat> It's going to go up into his private property there a bit, and, and obviously he's going to have a property that does this. So I don't know if he's going to have any fencing or anything. I don't know what his plans are. But I would suggest he comes in maybe and discusses it maybe as a better Well, but, but, but I'm, I'm inclined to, because what, I don't know what difference that's going to make for us. Okay. Because we, he's in, Entitled to uh, to get this work done, we, and and the 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 sidewalk has to be repaired, subject to ADA compliance. And we've gotten the the um, and and other parts of the sidewalk are going to be repaired. So what I'm saying is, we can grant the permit. It's up to him. If if Miss Greenfield's right and he's willing to meander, then he can meander. I agree with that. Absolutely. Um, do, and he can do that without... Do we have to even have an easement? I'm sorry? Do we have to even have an easement, Mr. Jordan? Yes. So we do... What we can't do is allow the sidewalk to... We can't allow the sidewalk repair property. to go onto his property without an easement. Without a formal legal dedication of that right-of-way right. in perpetuity to the city for him and all of his successors. So I need to have him in here before, we're gonna, before we can craft this result. Commissioner Penny, any... Yeah, I was just going to um, weigh in on, on the fact that it sounds like we need something either from him here in person or something signed by him. Um, to I, I, me, I would rather hold off on approving any anything. Um, I, I understand we, you know, we, we do want the work to get done. Um, and, you know, however, I think that, you know, um, to approve something today would be, would d disincentivize um, the concession that I think the community is looking for. Um, I don't want to hold this up indefinitely, but... Yeah. Maybe try one more well, I, I think we have to because also because we have to have an easement, and it's not just agreeing. I mean, we have right. to actually have the easement granted. Okay, so um, he wants the tree removal permit, correct? Even if it's meandering, so he has incentive to come back to us. Um, so can we? I don't want to just put a date on the calendar that he may not agree to. So you have you know how to contact him, right, Mr. Tyson? Absolutely. Okay. So I, I would like colleagues to narrow the issue down, though. Uh, when we come back, I don't want to revisit everything here. We 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 have all the answers we need from the city attorney's office on the width of the sidewalk. Um, what I'd like to know, and I would prefer rather than something in writing, I would prefer that he come here so we have an oral record, and and if we have questions, we can ask questions. And if he has questions, he can ask questions. Right. Um, of find a date that he's available to come on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday between, you know, at 10 a.m. Sure. Um, and whatever that date is, Mr. Tyson, you'll let Mr. Uh, Campos know. And 
and um, uh, and the the residents know as well, so that everyone can come in and we can finally get this resolved. Does that think Commissioner Repenning's right? Yeah, Commissioner Sinto. Thank you, um, Mr. Tyson. You know, on the subject of the easement, I think uh, if we can be clear with the with the owner developer about what is the exact easement, because if we're going back and forth and ambiguous and vague, it's it's not going to help us. Right. I think we need to really drill down on a document that he can sign off on or agree to that will expedite the easement and say, okay, I'm agreeing to this. We're, we're going to do it, and then we could go ahead. And, and, and there's no hurry. I'm not in a hurry for this. My issue about trying to want to resolve it is I, I hate hauling people here out of their lives to keep coming for hearings on this. That's my – so – I'm in no hurry here, I, I, but, but you know, I would like to, for the next time that we come, we'd like to be able to get to resolution. And to Commissioner Asinto's point, um, it ought to be real clear to the owner and to the residents what the, the design of the sidewalk will look like. Correct. Um, and it wouldn't hurt to submit it to Ms. Rittenberg as well, um, so that we know that that her requirements for the ADA, I think as long as it's four feet, it's okay with her. But let's get, let's get confirmation. Commissioner, I'm sorry, Mr. Jordan? Well, yes, as, as Tim pointed, it, it's, the, it's a four foot minimum width. Yeah. However, there's also requirements about the, the turns that those sidewalks make. So it, it, it can't be, say, a sharp corner that maintains a right it can't be a 90 degree which is why yeah. the sidewalks when you see them meandering it's why they meander it's yeah. because there are requirements about those turns as well right okay also um, the uh, driveway will have to be approved by Bureau of Engineering as far as him changing how it will work so this is just not one thing where he can say he wants to he'll have to go actually with plans and show them get them approved so there's a little bit more involved okay if and so he wants to do it. Well, if that's what it takes to save the tree and he agrees to it. Correct. You can get a, right. if you ask, BOE will give you a, an expedited review of that. Yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do is it's, the item is going to be continued to a date. Um, yes, I'll call you in just a minute, sir. Uh, to a date to be determined. Um, and that's Mr. Ewing? Come on up. You have a speaker card in. Yes, sir. Good morning, and uh, thank you. I, I, I realize this has taken a, an inordinate amount of your time, and I thank you for taking it. And <clears throat> I would hope that given that we're trying to save trees in this city and promote trees in this city, that maybe something could come out of this that would be a process going forward for similar situations. So. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it may be. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah. Because um, I can't imagine that these kinds of things don't come up, you know, fairly often. Um, one thing that the owner will want to know specifically, what are the minimum requirements for his dedication? And so... Um, Stefan here is a licensed landscape designer. Um, if we can get specifications... That's going to come from the Bureau of Engineering. No, I, I understand that, but what I'm saying is if we could get specifications for what that looks like, he could draw it up for the owner. And frankly, aesthetically, this really works with a property, which the building is designed like a wave. Um, I don't know if you've seen pictures of I it. I did. So... Uh, so that meandering might work uh, uh, thematically very well with it. Um, one thing I would like to bring up is that it seems to me that the approvals here are done in a strange order because the building was approved before the curb cut was approved. So now you're locked into a situation where you can only approve a driveway for where the thing is already built rather than, you know, that, that uh, it's, I would have thought that the curb cut would have been approved before they embarked on a building and put the driveway where they put it. That's right. just minutes. an observation. Um, you have a final point, sir? Uh, yes. Uh, just 
I don't think that he ever was given this option, uh, and that his understanding. That's irrelevant now because he's going to be. Gi it's going to be given to him. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. So that's it. Thank you okay. very much. Thank you. Um, anything, Mr. Stinger? Anything at all? Okay. Thank you all. So, Mr. Tyson, you'll. We. It's. This has been continued to a date to be determined. Um, and you'll communicate with the owner and the developer um, and Mr. Ewing. Uh, I, I, we're not going to take up any more time, sir. If you want to speak to Mr. Tyson, you can... A very quick question, if I may. Well, I, but I'm not going to... If you have a question, you can ask Mr. Tyson. It's, it's not a question for him, though. And it's simply, would it be possible to do something and condition it? Well, we're, we're not going to work that out here right now. Um, uh, so uh, it's it's going to be continued to 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 a date later, and um, and I want the I'm not going to condition anything without the owner in the room. I'll, I'll tell you that, Mr. Ewing. Um, so um, uh, we will, um, uh, and you'll find a date that's convenient for him, and we'll see if we can't meander the sidewalk in a way that satisfies everybody. I will speak with the owner, and we will get a date that will work for him and I will contact Fernando and we will come back to board and I will inform him of all these different parameters. Yeah, thank you, Tim. The other issue too is um, the, it, I think that for regarding the driveway issues that Mr. Ewing mentioned, I think those are going to have to be resolved by the Bureau of Engineering. I think he's right about about Actually, the, I'm the one that said BOE has to look at those, their plans and they have to be approved by BOE in order for that to be done. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, you made the point. He was, yeah. Whatever. Okay, no worries. Okay. And, Commissioner, I will notify all the uh, attendees today in the meeting uh, when that date will be determined. So we'll at least have that within three to five days before that meeting is scheduled. Okay, so that's, that's it for the disposition temporarily of agenda item number two. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, agenda item number five, Mr. Cirillo, on our oral report regarding our construction services contract, the quarterly status update from the yes. Bureau of Engineering. Good morning, Mike Cirillo with the Bureau of Engineering. Hopefully everybody has a copy of the uh, quarterly report that I would uh, emailed. Uh, just for clarification, Cisco is, is not the computer company, it's construction <laughs> services contract. It's a catchy acronym we came up with, uh, but sometimes confused with the, uh, with the computer company. Uh, this is a, uh, a contract we use for small wastewater projects uh, that uh, are, need to be done quickly, but not necessarily emergencies. Uh, the Bureau of Sanitation has been very supportive of the Cisco contract. We're in our ninth iteration of this contract. Uh, the beauty of Cisco is it allows us to mobilize quickly with the contractor. Um, we're able to do uh, items such as potholing uh, for future contracts to identify, let's say, uh, unforeseen utilities. Um, we use Cisco to aid in uh, startup and optimization of projects. Since they're on site, they generally have a lower overhead rate than bringing on a brand new contractor. We do independent estimates on every task order that we issue to Cisco to make sure that uh, we're negotiating a fair price for the city. And the Cisco contract is for a three-year period um, and we find some benefit in, in that because um, having a contractor there for a couple of years, they get to know the treatment plant system, they get to know the staff that's involved, and we find that they work well uh, with plant staff if they've uh, got a three-year contract with us. So that's just an overview on Cisco. Now let me talk a little bit about the quarterly report. The current Cisco contractor is Murray Company. Uh, the contract expires in April of 18th, so uh, April of 2018, so we're about 44% of the, the time. And you can see with the money, uh, we've authorized about $5.2 million, also about 44% of the, of the money. So we're tracking well from a money and time perspective. Um, if I can uh, have, you, have you turn to the second page, I just want to highlight a few of the projects that have recently uh, um, are ongoing and also been completed that have been critical to maintaining plan operations. Uh, the first one on the top is called the SWF North Side uh, Filters Refurbishment. This was a project that refurbished some uh, tertiary filters that the plant uses. They use this water for uh, cooling water for critical plant processes. Uh, and without this water, the plant cannot operate. So this uh, was an instrumental project in having Cisco go in and retrofit these filters to make sure they were uh, reliable. If you look down on the same uh, uh, portion, 
line number seven, pump plant 601 improvements, another uh, Cisco project uh, that was done to retrofit some of the pumps and supports to ensure that we didn't have any failures in these, uh, in these uh, uh, pumps. We also did some header replacement and valve replacement. As you know, the critical nature of pump plants is if they don't pump, we have spills. So very, very critical that we maintain the operation of the pump plants. If you go down to the lower chart there and you look at uh, item uh, seven, uh, cryogenic DCAC liner repair. The cryogenic facility is at Hyperion. It produces pure oxygen for the treatment process and uh, without uh, pure oxygen the plant would violate uh, their NPDES permit. So uh, uh, Cisco was able to come in and uh, repair that uh, DCAC liner and uh, avoid that. Um, also line number nine, if you look down, catch basin screens, since we had a, uh, if, you, if you recall some time ago, a spill of some debris on the beach, we've gone in and installed um, uh, 70 plus screens within the treatment plant on the catch basins to prevent uh, anything from washing out, uh, out, uh, out the outfall and out of the beaches. Uh, this was a, a perfect Cisco type project because we could quickly do a design, get Cisco to come out there and mobilize and install the screens. They had it done in uh, three, four weeks and uh, it was a very successful quick project. Um, so that's a little summary on some of the work and then just quickly on the um, uh, outreach efforts and uh, um, utilization to date. If you look at the table on the, on the second page there, you can see that we have uh, pretty favorable numbers with respect to MBE uh, and uh, SBE and DVBE. We're all positive by uh, uh, significant amounts. We are um, a little bit negative on the WBE and EBE but uh, we're constantly um, uh, attending um, outreach events to uh, sort of promote Cisco to some of the, the businesses. And we are contacting the firms. We have a list from Bavin of all the uh, various categories of firms and, and each of these categories. And we've, we've got that list on file. So anytime work comes up, we can actively reach out uh, to these firms to try to get them to, uh, to join the Cisco team and do work for us. So it is something that we uh, keep in mind all the time anytime we get new work and um, we're always attempting to bring these numbers up. So I'll take any questions. Commissioner Asento. Thank you, President James. Mike, thanks for the great report. Appreciate the detail, the over um, 100,000, the categories and under 100,000, mm -hmm. and you pointing out, especially line nine, that, that catch basin screens that, that are catching the Mosul that, that went out last mm -hmm. summer. That's something we want to avoid. So getting something being responsive really quick is important. So I think you're using uh, the Cisco contract well. Uh, you know, for 44% and, and being 13.3 for MEB and 7% above <coughs> small business and uh, DV, DBE at 3.5% at 44% is pretty good. I think that um, let's strive to, to get those negatives, those slightly negatives over and just continue to do outreach and, and make the Cisco a, a real good diverse MEB, WEB project for us. Thank you. Uh, anything else? I don't have anything for you, Mike. Thank Great. you. Thank um, you. I appreciate the update. Sure. Uh, the oral report will be received. Mr. Campos, have we cleared the desk? Yes, you have. Uh, thank you, everyone. We are adjourned this Monday morning.